Yo, what is up guys? This is John J57 here, and I got the surprise for you. Whoopah. This is my CBR 1000 double R. This is probably the highest mileage most people will ever see on a double R. If you have any higher mileage, please let me know. I looked everywhere and I could find only hints that someone has something higher than this, but this entertains the hell out of me. I know that there are higher out there, but no videos of it that I could find, no images. This boy has 62,000 miles. Insane. While he definitely has been down at some point, I don't think it's ever suffered any major crashes. The bike is actually in really good condition, despite the fairings and uh, the owner's modifications. Uh, I don't actually hate the stickers. They're a little over the top, but I really enjoy the, how everyone else seems to hate them. That actually tickles me a little bit. I really enjoy that. Um, so they'll probably stay on there for a little bit, probably stay like this for a while. But this is going to be the new project bike for the channel. I'm going to try and do most of the changes to this bike to make it into a, a real fire blade on channel and we'll see how long this motor lasts. I think we can get well past 100,000 on this thing. The bones are good, the motor's strong. Let's take this thing for a ride, guys. So let's talk about what's currently wrong with the bike. All these plastics are held on with bubble gum and zip ties, my dude. That is a problem for me. Uh, you know, you can't have a fire blade that, that looks like this. I hate that. So we're gonna have to work on that. Uh, there are numerous deep gouges, scratches, uh, little bits missing off the fairings. This thing is taking a beating. Um, but it's, like I said, it's all there. It handles fine. Uh, the turn signals don't currently work. I think that's an electrical harness thing. I think he just doesn't have it um, hooked up correctly. Uh, it looks like he has a TSD fender eliminator on here, but didn't use it uh, correctly. Didn't hook it up. Uh, I can't get through there. I wanted to, but I don't think I can fit through there. I'm too uncomfortable with this bike. The turn signals, they do not work. The missing a headlight cap and that is actually the headlight that does not work. There's an LED one in there. No, no good. Burnt out. The high beam does work. Um, albeit not well. Has a shitty LED bulb in there that is not ideal at all. Um, turn signals. Not, none of them work. Not the front indicators. Not the rear indicators. Nothing. Don't know why. Um, woo, listen to that. Bike. We got an SC Project exhaust on there. Too goddamn loud. It. I wear earplugs everywhere I ride, and these are 25 NRG rated earplugs. Uh, and I, I, I hear so much of this bike, especially at the high RPMs. This thing is insanely loud at the high RPMs. Uh, the throttle cable seems to be loose and has a lot of play. Um, but that's a free thing to fix. Whoa! Just, just hearing that inline four again, man. It's been so long since I've got to hear a blade running, but man, there is nothing like being on the back of one of these things when they are revving up. I didn't even go that hard. Uh, man, these things just have so much power and they sound so good. Let's see if we can get it wound up just a little bit here. Woo! That's the problem with these blades, man. These things will keep you in trouble. They put you in the hot seat for speed. Man, that bike sounds good. So let's see, what else do we have wrong? The license plate is currently zip tied to the back of the passenger pegs. That is obviously all kinds of illegal and wrong. Uh, surprising to me, it is registered. 
registered and it is up to date on registration despite the license plate basically being invisible usually those two things don't seem to go together very well uh, I got some zip ties here holding this guy together uh, these feel kind of loose to a degree not the mirrors themselves but the indicators inside of them uh, they just feel not put together well they might be eBay knockoffs this clutch pull is incredibly tight oh my god it takes a lot of effort to pull that clutch uh, that's probably due to bad adjustment and poor lubrication you can tell here he has an almost that max extension and I still got play uh, I've got a lot of room in this brake I'm not sure what's going on with that it works fine it might just be the way the CBR brake is a lot of uh, free play but I'm gonna see if I can adjust that a little bit might be an adjustable thing um, the rear sets are eBay aftermarket and they are hot garbage um, at least in their current configuration I'll look to see if I can salvage them they don't look particularly great they don't look particularly built well uh, so I think I'm going to go back to a, a black set of OEM uh, rear sets from the factory came great there's no reason to modify it in that regard uh, unless you're a track racer or a really really high level street rider i'm neither of those things i recognize that so oem is probably good for me let's try and go over some of the positives of this bike i got this bike for hell of cheap oh my goodness i got this bike for $3,800. Now I know what you're probably thinking. John, 61,800 miles says that bike is not worth anything to me. I disagree and I was willing to rest my money for it. Now there's a few things I wanted to bring up right now. I've been on Reddit and I've been seeing this thing cost around a lot. And I wanted to put my money where my mouth was because I held an opinion on this bike that I think is accurate and I wanted to prove myself right by actually doing what I said. What I said was, I should not buy a ZX-10R, I should not buy uh, an R1, and I should, well, uh, the geeks are kind of falls into a different category, but I shouldn't buy a specialized track-oriented machine when I'm a normal rider. I should buy the bike that's ab for the average rider, and granted, a 1000 is already a specialized machine in and of itself. But I, I made the claim that it makes more sense for your average person who does a varied amount of riding, like a variable type of riding, to buy a bike that's a jack of all trades. If you go online, you're going to see a bunch of certain things. You're going to see people say that this bike is too smooth for its own good. You're going to see people say that it's boring. I, I'll never understand that. You're going to hear people say that it's slow. You're going to hear people say that uh, the power is too linear. And to a degree, I can understand why you would think that. at this guys I ah. this is why I bought this bike I feel almost as nimble as my ninja 400 lane splitting now granted I'm lane splitting at a slow speed the way you should and this just feels good now guys ah, look at that his stupid little spiky things are scratching up the mirror uh, I'll tell you this right now uh, I'm not recommending that you go out and buy any high mileage leader bike that you see this is definitely an experiment that could result in a lot of pain for me financially Woo. Woo. these boys
All right, guys, so I did forget that I was recording while I was riding. I got a little distracted by all the traffic going on and by a CHP officer that was a little bit further up in the video. So I just overlaid some video of me riding the bike home from when I first picked it up. But yeah, I want to say that, you know, I'm not at all advertising you buy high mileage bikes uh, just for the sake of it like I did. And I'm not advertising that the CBR is the best leader bike. But I am going to say that a jack of all trade bikes is the best suited to a jack of all trade rider. If you're a kind of person who does a lot of diverse riding, so you do canyon carving, mostly commuting, uh, maybe you do a track day every once a year or something like that, uh, you like to hang out with any group rides, a jack of all trade bike is going to be really good for you. And that's not to say that the CBR is the best jack of all trades bike. There are definitely bikes that suit the street a whole lot better than this bike. But as far as the kind of rider I am, if I wanted a leader bike, this is going to be the one that I would prefer. So that's going to be it for you guys. I do want to let you know that there's going to be more videos being pushed out about putting the fire blade back together and getting it back to 100. I'm going to try and record as much of it as I can. I know I'm not super great about doing that, but this is going to be hopefully a little bit different. I'm going to learn a lot along the way. So keep watching, subscribe, like, and yeah, you guys can see what happens to this bike as I progress. I've already got a ton of parts coming. I've already cleaned it up a lot in some of the future videos you're going to see. So super excited to, to put this out there and I hope you guys follow along. It's going to be a really fun build.